Welcome to Men's Style Fashion Week. Thank you for having me. Um, just if you can tell um, our followers, and they're from the USA mainly, yep. who are you and what you do? I'm Ricky Hall. I'm with Next Model Agency um, in London. Um, Boom Model Agency in Milan and talent models in, uh, in Munich. Right. I'm 26 years old, I'm originally from Wolverhampton. Moved here uh, about three years ago to London. I live in Brixton now. Right. Um, and yeah, since, literally since I moved down here, it's just gone, it's just gone quite busy for me. It's gone quite big, you know, quite, right. in such a little time. Uh, it's a lot, obviously a lot to do with the beards. Um, it's quite exciting, you know. So from a, from a boy from a, from a little town in the, in the Midlands, in the middle of England, it's, yeah. to, to get to a position where I am today, it's quite, it's quite, sorry, it's quite scary in a way as well. So, but yeah, that's that's what I'm about. I used to be a mechanic as well before this. So, going from that, two different ends of the spectrum. It's like, did I mean you're the unconventional model, and I love it. Did it? Did modelling find you, or you chose? Yeah, to yeah. It away? Uh, basically, I came down to uh, to meet a friend called Laura. Uh, this is before. This is when I was still living in Wolverhampton, and I came down in the works van. I was still covered in oil from work on the bikes the, the day before. Uh, my dad's motorbike cycle business in, uh, in Wolverhampton. And uh, so yeah, came down, went to Top Man, had to get a couple of t-shirts, yeah. plain, plain basic white t-shirts that I always wear. Yeah. And um, yeah, as I was coming out of Top Man, I got scouted by, obviously by a model scout, right. and they go, he was just being a model. So I was like, oh, that was silly. Oh, this, this is when I had a little moustache at the yeah, time, yeah, so a little yeah. porn star moustache. Yeah. Uh, I was walking out of Top Man, got a scout, they go, are you interested in being a model? I was like, I was like, don't be saft, I mean, I'm from all rams, I mean, you can even tell what I'm from. I don't look like a fucking model. And I thought she was having me on, I thought, oh, does she want your money for stuff? And I was like, she want to take no. you home? Yeah, yeah, just take me home and have a wicked way with me. <laughs> I was kind of up for that. Like, oh. and, um, but yeah, so, yeah, got put in a taxi with her, taken to Nevs, and pretty much got, got signed that day, yeah. So then I had to wow. move down within, within a month's time. And, you know, it's just, to, to be thrown out opportunities in, in such a, a quick, it's such an instant. It was just really. I thought, you know what? I'm never going to have this, you know, position again to do this, or yeah. I'm never going to have this opportunity ever. Yeah. Just go with it. If it doesn't work out, I can always move back home. That's um, kind of how it came about. Let's talk about the your first shoot. How did you sort of handle modelling? A lot of guys are like, they don't take yeah, it that seriously. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Um, because I've always been, I've always dicked about. You know what I mean? I've always been that kid. I've always been like the class clown. Always getting in trouble, not like a, a bad person, just yeah, a bit yeah, of a cheeky yeah. little twat, you know. Um, but I kind of just I fell into it really well. And my first ever shoot was with Darren Black. You must, uh, you, 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 he did the glorious bastard shoot with all the tattoo models. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant photographer, one of, one of my best friends as well now. He's the first person ever shot me. And it's when I still had the moustache, uh, no beard at all. And um, yeah, it just, it just kind of really came quite natural. It's kind of a little bit like acting and playing a bit of a. Because it when I had the moustache and uh, I was and I had my hook, so I was, it was a little bit more fun modelling. Yeah. Whereas you can piss about a bit more, do little silly little things, you know, throw some swear words about and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, necking Jack Daniels, all this kind of that kind of acting kind of stuff. Uh, whereas now it's a little bit more serious. But yeah, it, it just kind of eased my way into that way, and it, it, just, it just happened naturally, really. Just yeah. playing myself, basically. Is what I do. A caricature of myself, I think it is. I, I, I agree. We all have um, like what I call a David versus Goliath moment in your career. What, what some of the challenges that... I mean, yeah, I get them quite a lot because obviously for a model, everyone thinks I'm a lot taller than what I am. So I'm only like 5'11". I'm not very tall for a model. So every casting I go to, it always seems that literally David versus Goliath because everyone's a lot, lot taller than me or a lot, lot bigger. Um, so I look about six, two, six, three when, the, when I come on, I think it, but yeah, it's a sound five eleven. Um, so initially, every every casting I go to, it kind of seems like that. It kind of seems a little bit challenging. I've got to put myself a little bit. I think it's because I've, I've got such a strong look that it, it kind of works in my favour, obviously. But yeah, it's, it's I, I get it quite all the time, and always, even even with shows or even certain shows, I always get a little bit nervous before going. So I'm like, oh, done a bit like this, this, this little kid or that, or. Oh, they're going to be better than me, they're going to have a bigger beard than me, or whatever that. If someone's got a bigger beard, then that's it, fuck it, I'm going home. Well, that's it, I'm not having none of this shit. Ricky's going home, and he's going to bed, he's going to cry himself to sleep, and watch some porn. That's what I'm going to do. Highlight of your career so far? Right, this is a hard one, really, because I, I, there's something I've just done that I can't really say. Ooh. It comes out in a month's time. Ooh. I will tell you off camera. Right. I don't know, actually, I don't think I'm allowed to do that, actually. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it will be out in a month. But it's, 
Oh, because I do, I do a lot of stuff to do with diesel. Right. I know. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, I did a, um, I did a music video for the shoes, um, and that was with Jake Gyllenhaal. And that was great. To, to actually, it's my first kind of active role um, as, a, as a model. And to work with Jake, just to see him walk around the corner, he's just talking and hanging out. And it was, it was so, so surreal. It was, it, was, I, it was the first time I ever met a, kind of a, a famous person. You know, rather than like an X Factor dickhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just to just to do a little, just do a little scene with him. Um, just, it just blew my mind. I mean, that's still up there for me. One of the most, I mean, one of the best actors in the world, I believe. Um, I mean, I clearly yeah. can see you heading down that role. Totally, I mean, uh, totally. Modelling and acting is there a link, and, and is it something you well, want to do? Because people, who, yeah, with models usually either go to they go to one ways. I've go to the acting uh, route, or they go to the, like, the singer or DJing or or stuff like that. I can't see <laughs> I'm not a DJ. I'll go down the acting route, I think, so... Um, so the gangster yeah. hard Actually, I'm not that bad at singing, actually. Tell a lie. I'm not that bad. But I'm not, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to drop a note now. <laughs> I'll clear the face. But, um, but yeah, just, acting must be, you know, something quite gritty, like something to do with like a Guy Ritchie kind of film. Like that. I mean, I can't do a period drama with all this fucking shit hanging up. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Go on with never, the wind. You never oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wind. So like, yeah, you definitely. Know, pushing the boundaries. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. That would be, be little. Um, but yeah, I'd totally definitely down, down that kind of route. I'd love to start doing that in space. Yeah. You know, Ricky, I ask my question, this question often, you know, what are we doing it for? Like, why are you doing what you do? Because I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it and, and people people appreciate what I'm doing. It's like, it's, it's come to that uh, position now where you know, people are looking for, when I ever put like uh, behind the scenes shots on. So with my Instagram and my Twitter, I always like to to put behind the scenes shots on. It's because it makes feel, people people feel a bit more involved, involved a bit more closer to what you're to what you're doing, um, and it, it it kind of like breaks it down as the they always see the finished article. Whereas um, if you put them behind the scenes, they see me through the makeup, they see me dicking about at lunchtime with the other models or, or just having a cigarette outside or whatever. And it kind of breaks that, the fit, that, that polished article that you'd see in the magazine or in a campaign. And it kind of breaks it down to, it's just a normal person. It's this guy from Wolverhampton who's got a little bit lucky a little bit. If it wasn't me, it was going to be somebody else who'd have got there first, you know, and, and I would have probably not have been as, as successful as I would have been now. So I should have been in the right time, being seen by the right person or doing the right shoot. And then it's all it builds up to all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, just I just like, I just really like enjoying it. And if I make people happy by what I do, then I'll do it as long as I possibly can and try and make it, you know, it's just, cause as I said, people want to, when I, is it, sorry, that was it. When I was talking about behind the scenes, when I was, they go whatever magazine it's for, they go, I can't wait to see the, the shots, I can't wait to see the video or whatever. So they're really looking forward to my next work, yeah, image or, or video or whatever it is, um, and that's brilliant. And it makes you kind of I sit in bed sometimes. I mean, I'm lying in bed watching something to do with Dave Attenborough, because that's what I fall asleep to. Something to do with the deep blue sea, like that's calming. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking, better go. Look, these people actually, I really look forward to seeing what I do next. And, yeah. And, and I'd, yeah, I'd really like to meet these people and I try and meet as many people as I possibly can when I, when I, when I go out, go out for drinking and people come up to me and have photos and stuff. I, I want to be as much as involved with the, with the people who follow me and, um, and respect me as a model as much possibly can. So they're, they're amazing, they're, they're awesome. They're, I wouldn't be the same person I would be today if I wasn't have my followers and, and some people that, you know, yeah, who, who read blog stuff and all this kind of stuff. I wouldn't be, yeah, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be as far as successful as that thing. A final question, something that you've great, regretted doing. Do you believe in regret? No, not at all. I think it adds character. And it also, I mean... How do you handle rejection? You know? How do you handle rejection? Yeah. I mean, I was being a model, you have to handle rejection that more or less daily through castings or, you know, you know, you get option for different jobs and sometimes they tell you the job and it, the option of what job it could be, like you fly off here, 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 and you get excited and it doesn't, it doesn't work out, then you, you kind of just have to go, all right, well, if I don't get that, I'm going to get someone else. You can't please everybody. Um, and if you don't get that job, you're going to get someone else. So, but yeah, but um, yeah, I, I could never regret anything. I mean, I was a little shit at school, but I mean, <laughs> so a lot of people, but you know, I don't regret a single thing. I mean, I've, I've done little stupid tattoos and stuff when drunk, which you shouldn't do and I don't condone. But 
things happen. I just think kids. It tells a story. Everything, every little fuck up you do in your life tells a little story. When you get older, you're gonna have a lot of interesting stories. So fuck up a lot, really, and then you're gonna be a really interesting old man. Is what I'm, I'm aiming for. Ricky, thank you so much, Ricky. No, no really I feel very relaxed and very oh, nice. Brilliant. Well, yeah, you're a, yeah, you're a great interviewer.